What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're checking out a SketchUp extension that allows you to extend objects to where they intersect with other objects inside of your models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Curic Extend is a tool for extending objects in SketchUp. You can check it out by visiting this link. Note that this is a paid extension. It's $15 for this extension. So let's go ahead and talk about what it can do. And so basically the way that this tool works is you can select objects and you can use this to extend them so that they match up with another object or another plane inside of SketchUp. So for example, I could take these walls and extend them up so that they match with the roof right here. And so one thing you might be thinking is we have talked about a similar tool inside a TIGS free tool set called Extrude Edges by Vector to Object. And so that tool basically allows you to select those edges, set a vector, and then it'll find the intersection point and it'll uh, basically extend those objects up so that they intersect with other objects. However, there are a few limitations in here, which we'll talk about, um, that make Curic Extend maybe a tool that would fit better for some other people. So the first is, if you're dealing with anything that's grouped, that extension is not going to work, right? So for this one, right, if I wanted to extend these and I tried to select these groups, Extrude Edges by Vector to Object isn't going to work because we have the groups selected rather than just the faces. So we would either have to do those individually, right, like this, for each wall or explode those groups, neither of which are things that I really want to do. However, with Curic Extend, you can take these objects, you can select them while they're in the group and pick Extend to Plane. And so we're going to select them like this. We're going to mouse up here and we're going to click. You want to make sure, by the way, that you're in Extrude mode. So you just want to tap that Control key so that you see the little plus next to your objects. But now if I click in here, notice how it not only extends these up, but it also keeps each individual group as its own group. So you can use this to extrude those grouped objects as well. There's a couple other things that make this a different tool, which we'll talk about in a little bit. All right, and so that first tool is also interesting because it can also use a plane as kind of like a guide object. And so what I mean by that is I mean that if I was to activate this tool and then pick that surface like this, and then align it with a plane right here. Notice how your object is going to align with the plane, but it's going to continue that extrusion beyond your object. So you can use an object almost as a guide like this in order to create something that extends further up just by picking something that is longer than the target face that you have selected. So another interesting function that we have here is you also have the ability to set the direction that faces are extruded. So if I select these like this, Notice how there's an option down here for shift equals set direction. And so if I do that, notice how that's gonna allow me to set a direction based on anything that I mouse over. Well, in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this object right here, and then I'm gonna tap the control key, hit enter. And so notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna extrude these to this object or this face right here, um, and it's going to do it based on the direction we had selected. And so that's moderately interesting, but where that gets really interesting is when you do that with more of a curved face like this one. And so in this case though, you wouldn't want to use the extend to plane because a curve is made up of multiple different faces, right? So if you just extend a plane, what it's going to do is it's going to extend so that it runs into this one plane right here. What you would want to do in that case is you would want to select this object, make it a group, and then use the option for extend to object. So you would just select the object, Select what you want to extrude, use shift in order to set your direction, and then make sure you've tapped control. And then when I hit the enter key, what that's going to do is that's going to extrude all of those objects based on this direction into this object right here. So there's a lot of interesting applications for that one as well. All right, so now let's talk about this second option, which is extend to face. And so what that's going to do is that's going to take an object and it's only going to extend it to a single face. And so if I select this face right here, and then I select this face, notice what this is gonna do, and I'm gonna tap that control key, is it's only going to extend this object where it runs into this face and nowhere else, right? So if we were to select this second object in here, like this, and then select this face, it's only going to align it with this face right here. So there's a lot of interesting applications for that as well. Being able to do that to just that singular face inside of an object made up of multiple different faces there. 
And so, I mean, alternatively, if we were to select this whole thing and do an extend to face, right? So we were to select all of these different faces right here and then select this object, notice how it would extend them all to this face right here. So if I was to select them again, like this, and then click, notice how that's gonna extend all of them just where they intersect with this flat piece right here. And so really the tool that I think I would use the most here is this last one, which is extend to object. Because a lot of the time, I'm gonna be dealing with surfaces like this one right here, right? That um, are multiple different faces that are curved, making up an object. So I don't wanna extend to any of the individual faces in here, I wanna extend to the whole thing. And so the way that works is you just select the object, then click on this button. And so we're just gonna select all of these objects right here. We're gonna hit the enter key. And so when we do that, notice what that does is that extends all of these objects and then it cuts them off on this surface right here. So if you were lining stairs with a curved wall or anything with something curved, something like that, that could be really powerful. So one thing I will notice if you're doing complex surfaces like this one, it doesn't seem to like that for some reason. So if I activate the tool right here and then I select these, if I hit the enter key, it doesn't actually do anything. So I'm not sure if that's a limitation of the shape type or what it is, but for whatever reason, these really complex surfaces like this one, it doesn't seem to like them. So if you're trying to do something like that, probably extrusion tools is gonna to be a better fit um, where you have multiple different surfaces and extending them to the object. Again, it's not that either tool is better than the other one. It's just that this one doesn't seem to work with this surface the way that extrusion tools does. So just be aware of what you're trying to do because I think this one works a little bit better for applications like this where extrusion tools might work a little bit better for something like this. That's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought, um, how you feel about this extension. Just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.